So basically, I'm here to deliver the news that the regular news doesn't want to deliver. So they're saying 2022 poll, Democratic lead on midterm ballot, nearly disappears as election approaches. Now, I'm not going to read this entire thing, but I will leave you the link. So they're saying the new Yahoo News YouGov poll shows Republicans gaining ground in the closing weeks of the 2022 midterm campaign, narrowing Democrats' long-standing lead to just two percentage points, their slimmest to date. When asked which candidate they would vote for in their congressional district if the election were held today, 46% of registered voters now choose the Democrat, 44% pick the Republican. In August, Democrats were ahead on the so-called generic ballot question by six points. As recently as late September, they were ahead by four points. So, uh, you know, obviously their lead was um, narrowing. Now that the now that lead is gone, I think they're supposed to say now that the lead is gone and the battle for control of con- of Congress is effectively tied. The, apparently, this person doesn't like to use the. Uh, article the but anyway the survey of 1600 uh 1629 six, 1629 US adults which was conducted from October 13th to 17th has a margin of error of 2.7% uh, among registered voters who say they will definitely vote on election day or have voted already the race is even tighter 48% side with democrats 47 with republicans Okay, factor in structural forces that favor Republicans, such as gerrymandering, Democratic retirements, and it's no wonder that forecasters have given the GOP increasingly strong odds of flipping the U.S. House in November. Why are Republicans gaining momentum as the election approaches? Because previously undecided voters are breaking their way. Over the last three Yahoo News YouGov polls, Democratic support among registered voters has held steady, 45%, then 45%, then 46%. It's Republican support that has gone from 39 to 41 to 44. The number of voters who say they're not sure is shrinking, and more of them have been gravitating towards the GOP than the Democrats. The reasons for the shift are complex. On the one hand, the new Yahoo News YouGov poll found that President Biden's job approval rating among all Americans, 43% approved, 51% disapproved, has actually improved over the last three weeks from 39% approved, 53% disapproved previously. Among registered voters, it's even better. 47% approved, 51% disapproved. Well, that's more disapprovals than approvals. Okay, uh, versus 44% approved, 53% disapproved previously. Now, I'm not reading all this shit. It's obvious what the problem is. Biden's presidency has been a failure. Jimmy Carter is like the only other presidency that we could even compare this to. And the problem that I see is the majority of voters right now are too young to remember Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter was before my time. I was born in 81. So basically the only presidents I ever really knew, I'll say, I even though Reagan was president around the time when I was a kid, it was George H.W. Bush and Bill Clinton, followed by George Bush again. Those are the presidents that I grew up with, despite the fact Reagan was there when I was president. So Biden thought that he's going to simply be able to help us forget all about the shit that we went through with high gas prices, supply shortages, and other issues related to the economy this year. He thought that he was just going to be able to make us forget that by throwing out $10,000 worth of student loan forgiveness, which we all understand at this point is just going to hurt the economy more because of inflation. He thought that he was going to make us forget about these gas prices by tapping into the Strategic Petroleum Reserve and getting these uh, states to cancel their gas tax up until about December. It's kind of like what I've been saying. The real economy is going to show its true face on November 9th. We're going to be voting on November 8th. And we're going to find out that next day who gets in there and who lost their jobs. But come November 9th, that's when the truth is going to come out. All of these winners who are on the opposite side, they're going to tell you the absolute truth then. But you're not going to hear the truth up until then. Because you think about it, November 9th, they could come out and say, yeah, well, um, you know, inflation's 30%, which it's not. But 
they could come out and say that. What are you going to do then? There is no more election day. Once November 8th passes, it's over. The real economy is going to show its true face. I would argue that the real economy is already showing its face. It's just that most of these people out there are too stupid to understand it because they have been convinced, oh, well, the reason why your gas price is high is because the oil companies are price gouging. Never mind Russia versus Ukraine. Never mind sanctions on cheap Russian oil. Never mind sanctions on Venezuela. Oh, no, the reason why your gas prices are so high is simply because when you think about what you think about. Get the fuck out of here. But there's that. There's also the supply shortage issues. We we went from Donald Trump meeting with Kim Jong-il. Un, il, I, I forget which one it was. But the fat guy. So we went from Donald Trump trying to make peace with North Korea. And for the most part, being at peace with Russia, despite the 2014 Crimean invasion, and despite our attempts to influence their elections for pro-Russians in that Donbass region, we went from relative peace to the brink of nuclear war. There is no reason Biden should still be in office at all. I, I'd have to wonder, like, at what point does Congress say, wait a minute, wait a minute. We went from, a, a, like, peace to fucking the brink of nuclear war. If Vladimir Putin decided tonight to use nuclear weapons against Ukraine, we can't just go in there and attack Russia over Ukraine. We can't just do that. Ukraine is not a NATO ally, number one. And number two, if they don't use those weapons on Americans, <laughs> there's nothing you could do. And I can't see destroying the entire world or at least fucking everything up for fucking Ukraine. They're, they're basically worthless I have no idea why we keep on sending money over there that's being completely wasted. 40 billion, whatever. It's being completely wasted. We are antagonizing Russia. Russia and China are growing stronger roots. They are gaining more support because the Europeans already see it. They're like, yeah, America is not going to suffer. They're going to get us to go along with their bullshit, but they're not the ones that are going to suffer. And those people see it now. They see, what is this? It's almost November. We're, we're, all, we're 15 days in November, basically. These people realize come winter, they're going to fucking freeze to death. And, and, and they know it. They know America and America may say, oh, yeah, well, we'll, we'll send you oil. We're not going to be able to send them people enough oil to keep them from fucking dying in their houses. You know, it's just ridiculous. But the bottom line is the Democrats have made abortion such a big issue that they think that they can rally all of these people behind abortion. Never mind the fact most men really don't support this uh, pro-choice agenda. Men innately think of it, they'd be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. If y'all are just killing off babies, it's like, I'll never be able to have a family just because you're selfish and you're trying to chase the bag and have a career when you should have your ass at home. So most men do not support this shit. We already know the Republicans don't support it, but most men don't really support this bullshit. And then there's a lot of uh, pro-life women who don't support this either. But the Democrats have done their best to make this an abortion issue, never mind how much of the economy they've completely fucked up. They're trying to make this an abortion issue. I don't think that's going to fly. I really just don't think it's going to fly. So I think the Republicans are probably going to take the majority when that happens, you know, all of this Trump January 6th bullshit, all of this goes away. All of it goes away. And I think that's one of the things that most of these Democrat talking heads and pundits, that's what they're really afraid of. They don't give a fuck about abortion. They've Either they've never had one, or even if they had one, they would never talk about it, or they'd never have another one. They're worried that all of this Trump rhetoric, all of this January 6th rhetoric, as soon as the Republicans take power, all of that shit just dies. Because the Republic, if the Republicans take the House or the Senate, there's nowhere to go. Because no matter what you do in the House, if you don't have the Senate too, you can forget it. Kamala Harris may have a gavel to break ties in the House. But if they lose that majority, the Democrats lose that majority... It's over. If the Republicans have the House and the Senate, Biden might just end up having to retire a little bit earlier. 
I would also like to point this out right here because I basically already mentioned this. Forbes had a story. Biden administration is planning to tap into the country's emergency petroleum reserves in an attempt to cut gas costs ahead of the midterm elections next month. Gas prices fall for seven days as White House considers selling emergency reserves to avoid the $4 mark. So you already know what the game is. They're trying to bribe us and they're trying to do anything they can to make us not as angry when we go to the polls. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work because I have to imagine people are smarter than that. Even if you manipulate energy costs, it doesn't change the fact that you created an economy where rent is unaffordable or where buying a house is damn near impossible. Most of these people don't understand the subtleties of the Federal Reserve. They just know that they're fucked and you're the president. That's what they know. So all of this trying to, to uh, manipulate these energy prices, it's like, come on, man. It's like, no matter how much you try to do it, it's like, we're, we're smarter than that. I mean, at, at the end of the day, people are going to vote with their wallets. Everything else is noise. We have no idea how much home heating oil is going to cost come December or come January. We have no idea. Like, for instance, I think my oil tank is about half full right now. So that means that I'm about to get an oil delivery sooner or later. When they deliver that oil, chances are there's going to be a bill waiting for me that's about six to $700. Now, normally, it's about... 500 or something dollars up until what was it the beginning of this year this was the first year where i saw a, a oil bill for a thousand something dollars so nah man you're not you're not fooling nobody you're not fooling nobody so you know ford knows it for i mean forbes knows it forbes knows it yeah you ain't fooling nobody you can forget it buddy so here's a story i wanted to also bring up says she bought her house as the market peak now she regrets it vanessa wong um BuzzFeed News. Kristen Riggins had 30 days to move after her landlord's management company told her they were selling the home she was renting with her three children. Unable to find an affordable rental in time, rents in Columbus, Georgia were rising. Riggins ended up moving her family into a hotel uncertain of what to do next. First of all, I'd like to point out, I don't see a father or hear anything about a father in this. I don't see a man in this picture. I don't know about you. Maybe he's invisible. I see her, but I don't see a man. I I hear them talking about, what was this? What is it, three children? I don't see a man in this picture. I don't hear anything about a father. So basically, Miss Riggins decided that she was going to be able to have three children and raise them on her own. Three children. Three. And she was going to be able to buy this house and everything was going to be hunky-dory? Nah, not without a man, dear. All that nonsense that the liberals taught you about equality and all that, none of that means nothing. You needed a man and you ain't got him there. But you had three kids by, I, I'm assuming, this one guy. You had three kids. So my first question is, where is he? So anyway, be that as it may. She has been pre-approved for a mortgage about a year earlier at a rate near 3.5. So she started to look more seriously at buying. I said, well, if I'm going to pay this rent, I might as well buy. See, that's the first mistake you made. Buying a house just ain't about looking at how much this place costs compared to apartment. Buying a house means you got to be able to fix this motherfucker if your roof breaks or your oil tank breaks or your boiler breaks or... Plumbing goes bad. It ain't as simple as just calling up a landlord. You're the landlord. So anyway, like many people caught in the latest home buying rush, however, Riggins, who processes medical claims for work, has repeatedly outbid. Her agent said she would have to go above a home's asking price if she wanted to close a deal. Yep, that's exactly what happened. The last two years have been a chaotic and frustrating time for home buyers as low mortgage rates and record high rent stirred up an unprecedented hysteria to own a place to live. Still an enduring component of the American dream. It led to feverish bidding wars, hasty closings, and poor or even waived inspections, all propelling home prices to new highs. Then the Federal Reserve hit the brakes in response to inflation. 
Mortgage rates spiked in 2022, cooling the housing market and suddenly making home ownership even more unaffordable for many. Investors now expect home values to drop in 39% of U.S. cities next year. Well, I guarantee you, it ain't going to drop in the cities that you want to live in. It'll drop in all them no-name, nobody-gives-a-fuck cities out in the middle of nowhere. It'll drop there, but it ain't going to drop in New York, Florida, Texas, or California, or Washington, or Oregon. It ain't going to drop. Yeah, you may see home prices fall in, I don't know, Troy, New York, or uh, uh, Saddleback, Maine, or some shit. I just made that up. But you're not going to see them drop in, I don't know, New York City, or, or Tampa, or Miami, the places you want to be. So anyway. Here's what BuzzFeed said. Well, wait, I want to get back to Ms. Riggins. I don't care about the rest of the story. I want to get back to Riggins and why she ain't got no man sitting next to her. In May, Riggins, $202,000 offer on a three-bedroom home with a yard was accepted, but interest rates were rising. I started to back out so many times, especially when I was going through those bidding wars, and even with this, I didn't feel good about bidding that much. So you shouldn't have. She said, I'll never forget when my agent did the paperwork and turned it in. I didn't get any sleep that night. You know why? Because that was your first signal that you can't afford it. I remember calling her the next morning was like, I'm thinking about backing out. Maybe I should just find a place to rent. Now, if you had an agent that was honest with you like I am, because I'll tell you quick, you can't afford that shit. The problem is, one thing I've realized about telling people you can't afford that based on what I see about your numbers here and how much money you bring in, is for some reason that almost emboldens these stupid motherfuckers to go buy some shit that they can't afford. I don't know what it is. It's like if you tell somebody, you know what, um, you make $5,000 a month. And you're trying to buy a house that's going to cost you like $3,800 a month. So you'll only have $1,200 left over. I don't think you can afford this. For whatever reason, you got these people. Oh, no, I can do it. God's going to make a way somehow. And then they go right out there and do it. And then they end up running back and forth to church praying about it. But then they end up losing the place to foreclosure. That's what usually happens. People got champagne taste and beer money. My bottom, Here's the bottom line, Miss Riggins, before I even continue reading this. If there was a man sitting next to you in that ugly-ass wool pillow that you got, if there was a man sitting there, let's call him Daryl, and you had a man sitting there next to you, your husband for those kids, and he was working and bringing money in, you wouldn't be having these problems because you'd have two incomes coming in. But see, these women, just like I've pointed out before, they think that they can just run out and buy a house. And, oh, yeah, it's all, oh, I'm just going to buy a house. Look at me. I got a hold on. Take a picture with the keys in front of the house, but it's just them standing in front of it. Well, guess what? Winter's coming. Winter's coming, and Century 21 is coming back for them keys. Because they, they thought it would be easy. They don't give a fuck about interest rates. They don't give a shit about the monthly payments. They just get it to get it so they can flex it on Instagram and flex it on their Facebook. Oh, yeah, Susie's a new homeowner. Yeah, well, guess what? It don't work like that, honey. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. Two incomes. In order to have a house now, you basically need two incomes or you better get ready to rent out part of that house. I, I've told you all this story. I got two female friends. One of the, the first one went out and bought a house so fucking far away from the city. She works in the city and she bought a house where a one way trip from work to home or from home to work, is no less than 30 miles. It's no less than 30 miles. No less. In fact, I think it's more. I think it might actually be 40-something miles. And I'm thinking to myself, what possessed you to buy a house where you got to literally drive over an hour back and forth, even if you're doing like top speed? 
even if you're doing the top 55, 65, maybe even 75 miles an hour. But we've got traffic every day. She must be going through hell to do that. Now it gets better. When we had COVID, this person, not naming any names, this person was working from home because she refused to take the injection. And the city said, no, you got to have the injection. She said, no, I'm not taking it. So she decided to go off pay. But she was able to afford the place because she was doing Airbnb. Because, you know, Airbnb, if you rent out part of your place, that in some times it can help you to mitigate the costs. That's called two incomes because that Airbnb becomes its own income if you're able to get enough out of these people. Then you also had a couple of other situations pop up, like you had these uh, Ukrainians and they were like, oh, you want to host some Ukrainians? We'll pay you if you let us use your house. So there's always things like that where Airbnb, they have the host option where you can host refugees and shit. You know, I don't know how you feel about that. But uh, bottom line is um, the second friend... She went out, bought a house, nice area, but her taxes are twice what mine are. And on top of that, she has to sleep in the basement. She had to finish her basement so she could stay in the basement and rinse out the entire top, better portion of her house to another family. And the family pays, I'll say, 75% of her mortgage. Now, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but here's the thing. If I'm in a house and it's my house, I'm going to be on the top fucking floor. I'm not going to be in nobody's basement, not even my own. It's just like right now. I'm on the top floor. I can look out right now and I can see the street and my cars. I don't want to be in a fucking basement, but here you are just to afford this place. You got to rent out the better parts of your house to be in the basement. That's insane. But some of them will just go for it, and some of them will do it just to prove their point. Oh, yeah, I'm an independent. All the ladies in my day day, throw your hands up in the air. All the ladies getting money, throw your hands up in the air. Charlie, how your angels get down like that? Tell me how your angels get down like that. you all got Beyonce convincing your dummies to go out there and be men. They are convincing you to go compete with men. This is what the manosphere is all about. They're telling you, no, these women aren't submitting simply because they think that they can go out there and be us. Let me tell you something right now. I would, I'm not going to do it because I'm half naked and shit. But the bottom line is, if you could see my house that I'm in right now, I have free reign over the entire place. The entire place. I would never rent to anybody. I don't want anybody around here around my stuff. When the day I moved into this place, the fucking mailman asked me, oh, oh, you're moving in there? Oh, are, are you renting? I was like, uh, no, but I'll let you know if anything changes. I was like, hey, I'm not getting in my fucking house. I don't want none of you motherfuckers in my house. My next door neighbor, Dominican girl, young Dominican girl. She was cute too. She was nice. She's living in the same size house, and there's about, there's like 15 of them in there. Like, literally, I count, there's like so many of them in there. And and I, and they had, there was like two of them per room. Oh, 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 you're a new neighbor? Oh, are, are you renting? Are you planning to rent? I was like, uh, not right away. I, I, I don't know about that, but I'll let you know if anything comes up. From the day they saw me, these people were watching my ass. You know how, like, when you get somebody move on to your block and you be watching them from the window and shit, like, quietly, like a stalker, and you're watching them moving stuff into their house and everything? People on my block were like, wait a minute, you're moving in there alone? Because, see, around here, everybody rent, like, everybody here in New York in general rents out part of their house if they have to. And, oh, shit, this guy's moving in there by himself? Wait a minute, that don't make no sense. And they don't understand it because, oh, shit, he must be a drug dealer or something. How the fuck does he afford that? Bottom line is, I ain't letting you motherfuckers move in my house. And I damn sure ain't sleeping in my own basement. Fuck that. Let me tell you something. My computer could have its own room. My Desert Eagle could have its own room. 
But I'd be damned if I let somebody move up in my place because you ain't going to be around me and my cool stuff. I ain't waiting to go to the bathroom for nobody. I like somebody, you know how you rent to somebody, if somebody in the shower, you got to wait. Fuck that. And, and let me tell you another thing. Let me, I was talking to, I was telling one of my uncles about this. And this, this has nothing to do with it, really. I was telling my uncle, I was like, you know what my favorite part about my house is? My washing machine and my dryer. I ain't going to nobody's laundromat. Fuck that. Like, there's people I know who have a house and refuse to get a washer and dryer because they've got kids that they have no control over and these kids are grown and they don't want them running up water bills. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And I, I'm not making this shit up. I'm like, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that y'all can't grow enough balls to tell your fucking kids to pay you enough money to justify them living in your house when they pass 30? You mean to tell me that you have to get your stuff together and pile your dirty clothes into a car and you got to drive to somebody's laundromat and you can't just say, you know what, I'm going to take a thousand bucks and I'm going to buy a washer and a dryer? I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Like, that's just stupid. Like that, it's inefficient. It's stupid. But uh, some of these people live in ways that you can't imagine. Here in New York, I've showed you before these stories of people desperate to get up in here. And these people will literally live in a closet if all you charge them is like $100 a month or something or $200 a month. There are people, I've seen people living in filth and squalor for $500 a month. Filth and squalor. On an air mattress. Let me tell you something. If you hear the sound of my voice, if you're dating somebody who's in an apartment and they're sleeping on an air mattress, an air mattress here, oh, man. You, you just setting yourself up for a rough ride. Rough ride. I dated this girl. This girl had a fucking air mattress <laughs> in, in Far Rockaway. And I'm like, What? Little ass room, one room, rented one room, had to share the kitchen and share the bath. I'm like, yo, man, that made me work twice as hard. I was like, that'll, no, man, I'd rather die. I was like, hells no. But anyway, I, I've gotten way off topic. So anyway, it says cut corner somewhere or try to pick up a part time job. No, listen, honey, the part time job you need to pick up is that man who gave you them kids so that he can pay part of that rent. That's what or that mortgage. That's what you. That's the part time job you need to pick up. You need to pick up Tyrone. That's what you need. Riggins tried her best to shake off her nerves and moved ahead with the sale. It was a relief to finally be able to move her kids out of the hotel. Out of the hotel, damn! But by the time she was close, she closed in July. Her mortgage rate was six, setting off a chain of financial consequences. Now, mind you, she couldn't even afford the the three point five. They pushed that shit up to six. At that point, you should have said, "No, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to get an apartment." But the problem is, you'd wasted all your time. And this was in July. So you already remember what the financial conditions were in July because the Ukraine-Russia thing started, what was that, in February, the end of February. It's just crazy. Riggins' monthly rent had only been 800 a month. Her mortgage payment for a home of the same size is about 1500 You see? That's how they get you. The house also needed repairs that her inspector did not catch. None of the kitchen appliance, none of the kitchen appliances were. So you mean to tell me that when I walked into my house and I tested the faucets and I just turned them on to see if they work? You mean to tell me when I flushed the toilets to see if they work? You mean to tell me when I checked the shower to see if it worked? None of this, none of this occurred to you. None of the appliance worked. None of them. There were electrical issues. The roof needed to be fixed. So you mean to tell me when you had your people inspecting this place, none of them mentioned to you, uh-oh, the roof don't work. None of them said nothing. This is the reason why women should not go to buy something unless they're experienced buyers. But better yet, what you should have done was you should have called Tyrone and had Tyrone come over and let him listen to the uh, structural engineers. I had a guy, structural engineer, come up on the top of my roof and tell me, oh, yeah, you know what? This roof is basically brand new. You're fine. Before I would fucking sign on that dotted line. Are you kidding me? 
I feel like I was really screwed over and put in a really bad space. You screwed yourself over, Riggins. Riggins depleted her savings and has nearly maxed out her credit cards, which she previously kept only for emergencies. She downsized from an SUV to a sedan. To reduce her car payments. Riggins is getting by paycheck to paycheck now. And earning extra money by working for Instacart. I have no idea what that is. And renting out her car. You got to rent out your goddamn car. Let me tell you something. I'd rather die than let one of these motherfuckers rent my Jeep SRT. And when I get my uh, Cadillac, my electric Cadillac, you ain't nobody's touch. I'm going to let my family drive it as soon as I get it. And maybe let my mom drive it because she really, really likes it a little bit. But nobody's touching that fucking car. If I had, I wouldn't let my woman touch that. It's just like I always told you, you get the, you, you let your woman use the black key, not the red key. If you have a Hellcat, I ain't letting them touch that shit so they could curb up my goddamn rims. Hell no. I'll get, I'll go out and buy you cash. I'll buy you a Nissan Ultima. You ain't touching my Cadillac. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. She must be out your damn mind. Record, record housing prices and rapidly rising interest rates have many people questioning the value and validity, viability of home ownership. The median home sale price in the U.S. has jumped by 34% to $440,300 in mid-2020. To 2022, from 327,100 at the end of 2019. Meanwhile, mortgage rates rose, and that's what really hurts you more than anything. Most of these people, whether it's leasing cars or getting a house, what really hurts isn't so much the home price, it's the rate on the mortgage. That makes it so it's almost impossible to refinance. That also makes it so that cheaper houses now cost you twice as much. Uh, I'm going to go down a little bit. The town... That was lauded as the best schools and nicest people was crime infested, racist, and just an awful experience. Racist and just an awful experience. Well, listen, what you should have done was call Tyrone. Call the Tyrone. house is a lemon, said Joshua Wingett, who bought a four bedroom home 40 minutes outside of San Diego in April for $730,000, which was $31,000 over asking, after losing out on seven other houses. Wing it and his uh, wing it and his husband are now dealing with about twenty thousand dollars in repairs. Did we have a choice? He said they have been living with a friend and needed to move. Whether it be renting or buying, knowing that interest rates were expected to rise, which would price them out, they made the decision to buy. We did what we could to get the best that we could, he said. It's costing us 55% of our income, and it sucks to have no free spending money. But at least we have a roof over our head. Wing it plans to refinance if mortgage rates decline, which they are not going to, and is considering renting out rooms to make ends meet. Uh-oh, that I think that could get a bit spicy if you know what I mean. This spring, after TJ Grace's landlord gave notice of a rent increase, she bought a house with her white. What the fuck? She bought a... So so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's a question. Here's a question. Before I keep going. So we've got a black woman with three kids, no husband, no man. And we've got a gay male couple. And now you've got a gay female couple. Is there such a thing as like a black family like where you have a man a woman and two kids or is there such a thing as even a white family where you have a white guy a woman and two kids or even in one kid I don't, I don't know it's like is this the route that we want to take this it's like are you trying because i've complained before that they were putting black women's faces on student loans and i've complained that they were putting black women's faces on foreclosure as if you're suddenly going to convince people that corporations need to pay up or something like that. But now you're doing it to the LGBT community. And I don't even know if the pictures are in here. But it's like, who you think you fooling? So anyway. Uh, TJ Grace and her wife. And, and the two friends they were living with. By the time we would look at something, it had basically already been sold. Yeah, that's what you're facing. They found a 1,900 square foot home in the nearby neighborhood of Lakewood, Washington. It was noticeably smaller than the 3,000 square feet they had been renting. But at 519,000 with a 4... 
8.9% mortgage rate. It was what they could afford. Landlords can charge whatever they want, Grace said, but owning hasn't been any easier for them. Yeah, and it's not going to be. Y'all should have known better. When, when y'all are trying to buy Dodgecoin, you should have listened to me. While her monthly mortgage payments are about as much as her rent was, necessary repairs to the roof, everybody's got a fucked up roof. Ended up costing $65,000. What kind of roof you got? Is it gold? Damn. Much more than the 12000 to 17000 the inspector had estimated before the sale closed. Yeah, you should have had all that shit done before you bought it. Meanwhile, Grace had quit her job as an administrative assistant in September 2021, one of many who left their jobs during last year's great resignation. Well, I'll tell you this. While y'all were great resignationing, I stayed right at my job and kept working hard and kept making my money. So while y'all felt that y'all was so free and everything was going to be fine and everything and that there's gray fucking clouds of silver linings, I said, you know what? Things are going to get worse and I'm going to make as much money as I can just doing what I do. But y'all y'all, y'all think, think, think butter doesn't melt in your mouth. Those who bought at the peak of the market have no equity in their house, oh boo-hoo, when values fall and therefore cannot borrow against their home value to manage unexpected maintenance and repair costs. Well, first of all, as a person who sold HELOCs, let me be the first to say that, first of all, you're not supposed to borrow against your house for unexpected costs. You're supposed to save up money and you're supposed to use the money you save for the unexpected costs. That's what you're supposed to do. At the very worst, you're supposed to use a HELOC for unexpected maintenance costs and then re quickly repay that HELOC. But too many of y'all are busy buying fucking cars, vacations, and all types of shit on your HELOC, which you're not supposed to do. That leaves them using cash or other forms of loans, said Eric Roberge, founder of Beyond Your Hammock, a financial planning firm that works with people in their 30s and 40s with families. What should have been a six-month build turned into 12 months due to material delays. Yeah, that's right. Says you should really be thinking about this in terms of having cash set aside up front for any issues. That's what I said. Rather than trying to finance that, said Jeremy Bone a financial advisor and founder of Paceline Wealth Management. There are options to finance this. That doesn't mean that they're good ones. Of course, they're not good because all of them are high percentage rates now. Uh, let's see, anything else important? This is a long-ass story. In Westchester County, New York, Sarah H. had bought a house. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sarah H., where's your husband, Sarah uh, oh, all the ladies in the day they throw your hands up in you, yeah? This is what you get. Y'all can't buy these places on your own. The costs are higher. The cost of living is higher. The mortgage rates are higher. The taxes rate... Never mind, never mind. All oh, the ladies in the day they throw your hands up in me, yeah? Beyonce has y'all convinced that y'all can compete with men, and it isn't until the guy comes and slaps that foreclosure notice on you that no, you can't. When pandemic restrictions only allowed her and her fiance, oh, fiance, you should have married him uh, for fiance, 20 minutes to view the property and prohibited them from bringing anyone with them for a second. What? Hold on. Sarah H. had bought a house for six seventy. Eleven thousand above ask. When pandemic restrictions only allowed her and her fiance 20 minutes to view the property. That's some bullshit. There's no fucking way. There's no way. There's no way I'd buy that shit without having a structural engineer come. Even if I had to leave and he had to come there with my fiance. That's ridiculous. Sarah had to push hard for the sellers to let in a termite inspector, a red flag, she later realized. I think he was rushed. He told her the house was fine, but turns out we have horrible, horrible termite damage. Renovating the kitchen, originally estimated to be a $40,000 product, would now cost 80000 Oh, my God. And now I'm looking at the pictures. This house looks like shit, honestly. Looking at the pictures. We know that the termite damage continues on throughout the house. That's only getting worse with time, Sarah said. While Sarah still loves the house, the financial impact has been hard to deal with. I'm sure it has. Payments for repairs has been coming from an inheritance. Wait, shouldn't it be have? Payments for repairs have been coming from an inheritance, 
savings and credit cards, but the couple has also had to deal with a shortage of supplies due to the pandemic. What really sucks are the projects we know we have to do, but we can't get to right now, she said. The basement floods and the skylight in the upstairs bathroom leaks. Damn. The neighbors honestly just feel bad for us, she said. While she was looking at taking legal action against her inspector, she was told by friends and colleagues it would be too costly to pursue and difficult to win. So they talked you out of it. Sarah, who is an academic, what the hell is that? What is an academic? You know what it sounds like? It says Sarah, it sounds to me like Sarah has high student loans. That's what it sounds like. What the fuck is an academic? You know how I told you before, if somebody has a job where if you say one word, you don't know what they're doing, that means there's something wrong. Like doctor, teacher, lawyer, plumber. Like, sir, if you could say one word and you know exactly what that person does, that's how you know that they have a good job. What the fuck is an academic? About $40,000 has been set aside for emergencies, but it just wasn't enough for all the house's problems. While she would like to build back up a housing fund, they have other more immediate costs to consider. My son. Uh-oh, but you're not married yet, so that means your son's not legitimate. Well, I hope you hurry up and get married so your son can finally not be Jon Snow and your your son can now be Aemon fucking Targaryen instead of Jon Snow. So anyway, I would love to save 4% of the home's value, but it's just not feasible. In late 2020, C. Garland and their husband... Oh, God damn, how many stories they got in here? They got a lot of stories in here. I'm going to have to just give you this because obviously they're trying to make a point, but I want to get back to Riggins. It says Riggins says she is the first person in her family to own a home, which she is proud of, although she regrets not having anyone to guide her through the process. Miss Riggins, that's your fault. When I went through the process, I had my own inspector come and inspect the place. I had him inspect the roof. I had him check for termites. I had him check for foundation issues. She has put her mortgage into forbearance. Uh-oh, that's, that's the beginning of the end right there. And while her payments are on hold now, interest is still accruing. She plans to save up to take care of the remaining repairs so that the house is in good enough condition to rent. So basically, you're ending up where exactly where you should have been in the first place. Then she and her kids can move in with her mother in Oklahoma to get back to a better spot financially. So basically, this is what's happening. She has a house under her name. She's going to try to rent the house out, basically hoping that the costs are so high to rent that people would rather just rent the house from her rather than go someplace else. She's going to have a bitch of a time trying to make enough profit from it to make it worth it because these people are basically just going to be living there and chances are you're not going to make enough profit to make it worth it. And then you got to go back and move back in with your mama and three kids just think about that people your mama you got you got to take your three kids no man and you got to move back in with your mama home ownership she said may still be upheld as a central part of the american dream but i don't think it's a dream i honestly think in my situation i was set up for failure nobody set you up you did this to yourself First of all, you've got three kids, and I don't see anything about no husband or man. That's number one. You needed a second income to even consider buying a house. I, and, and you know what? I know people all the time who ask me about buying a house, and I tell them, listen, um, if you don't have two incomes, based on what I know about your finances, you can't afford it. Just that simple. But sometimes when you tell people they can't afford something... Either they label you a hater or they say that, oh, well, you just don't believe in my dream or some bullshit like that. And they just go right on ahead with it. They just go right on ahead with the purchase. OK, free country. Do what you want. But guess what? You're the one with the forbearance letter right now. You're the one who's got to move back in with mom because you got three kids. Where's the man? Didn't say it. I, I, this is what I hate about these stories. I've mentioned this before. They always try to paint these stories using a black woman's face. Just like the ones that I've read about the student loans. Mostly they were black women. If it's not a black woman, it's a white woman. 
And it's always a woman. It's never you. You barely ever see guys in this shit because guys either know not to take out that kind of money or they know to stay away from worthless degrees. I don't know what it is. I don't know what. It, when are we going to get to the point where we actually tell the truth? And you know that's what the man. That's why they hate the manosphere because we bring up these talking points all the time, and actually talk about the fact that women have two thirds of the student loan debt, or that women are the highest foreclosure rates. We're the ones who talk about that stuff. So the bottom line is, Riggins is on her way out of that house. From what I can see, it's not that great of a house anyway. I mean, it's got two doors, and I'm not even sure which one's the regular front door. But uh, be that as it may, three kids, no husband, and you thought you were going to take on a mortgage by yourself? You're fooling yourself. You're fooling yourself. Maybe if you had three grown children who could work and participate to help you, that might be different. But I still have to ask, where's your husband? Where's Tyrone at? Where's he? I made up the name Tyrone. But where's he at? Where's he at? What you need to do is give Tyrone a call and tell him, you know what, Tyrone, you know, if you moved in with me, you know, we could be we could be parents for our children. And we'll live in this house together and you work and you bring home some money, and it'll help out. But nah, everybody wants to be independent. All the ladies imitate it, throw your hands up in the air. All the ladies get in my neck, throw your hands up in the air. Charlie, how your angels get down like that? Tell me how your angels get down like that. Now you got a forbearance letter, and you got to move back in with your mom. I don't get it. I re- honestly, I don't. I I don't understand in people's minds how they connect fucking dots that shouldn't be connected. I do not understand that. I never will. But she gonna find out the hard way. I just don't like the fact that what they keep doing is they keep taking black women and putting their face on this. Meanwhile, uh, what's her name and her her wife, and what's his name and his husband. Oh, you don't put their faces up here. Nah, you, but you got Riggins up here, right? You got Riggins up here. But that's just what they do in the news. I, you know, that's just what it is. It's like, what are you going to do? Who are you going to, who are you going to yell at? Who are you going to yell at? They just do this and they get away with it. You know, you, most of these people who are losing their houses should have never had houses in the first place. It should have been understood from day one. You can't afford this rent until you could afford it, whether that day comes or not. Rent until you can afford it. Now look at you. You ain't got no choice. Now you got to go. See, that's the one thing I got to say about this housing market. There ain't no bailouts. If I fall off, though, sheriff will come right here, pack my shit, and throw it out this fucking house. If I fall off, my other house that I'm renting out to tenants, sheriff will come right there, throw them out, and then board that shit up and I'll, I won't even be able to go into it. You know, there ain't no bailouts in this market. Uh-uh. There ain't no bailouts in the housing market. At all. There ain't none. When you you mess up, you're out. That's just it. Now, they did this mortgage forbearance and they did this, uh, what was it? Uh, there's something else. Um, uh, Biden had all these holds and shit put on rent. They had rent, not rent forbearance, but they had rent something. I forget the word. I, I'm getting tired now. It's 943. Bottom line is, there ain't no bailouts in this shit. Because the problem is, you know, the bank owns your house and your landlord owns your apartment. So if you stop paying, you get tossed out. And that's just how it works. You should have never bought that house. And, and, and what bothers me is you got all these socialists and these morons who don't even think. And when, you, when we were going through that 2008 financial crisis, I can't tell you how many arguments I got into. I was like, yo, listen, first of all, there's proper procedures for buying property. And if you ignore them just by being cheap or if you're trying to buy above your head, you're not supposed to have this in the first place. But we're dealing with people now who believe that they deserve everything they see. They don't believe in working to afford something. They don't believe in saying, no, I can't afford it and walking away. They don't believe in any of that. They don't believe in that. They think that whatever they see, they're supposed to have. But I'll tell you this, the forbearance letters and the foreclosure notices They're there to remind you that no, you don't. 
They're there to tell you, you reach too far, now you lose. And what bothers me more than anything is that these people should have never been allowed to purchase these places in the first place, but they did. And now they're not only going to lose everything that they paid to get in there, but they're going to lose everything they invested to get in there. So all of that money they had saved up to make those down payments, they're going to lose it all. They're going to lose all of it. I don't know if they'll get any compensation, but they're going to lose most of that. All it would have taken was for the bank underwriting to say, no, you can't afford this. Which actually makes me wonder, how did you go from a 3.5% to a 6% and they not say, no, nah, you can't afford this. We're not going to, we're not, we're underwriting it. We're going to say no. That's the real mistake. But see, nobody wants to hear that. What they want to hear is, yes, you're qualified and boom, you're signing on it. They don't want to hear, no, you can't afford it. No, it's just not going to happen. Banks have been signing these people up and letting them put their money into these houses and then foreclosing on them. So whatever repairs you do get, you lose that money. And that's just it. But these people, these people, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. When they say champagne taste and beer money, that's the absolute truth. There are some people who refuse to take no for an answer. And they're going to be the ones who find out real quick, winter's coming. Winter's coming. So I don't know what you're going to do, Miss Riggins, but if I were you, you better call Tyrone. Call him. But you can't use my phone.